not sure if you guys realized, but Nice was actually ruled and ran by the King of Italy, and I'm talking back in the 1800s. And so at one point, the people who would vote were the higher aristocratic kind of people, and um, they voted that they wanted to have Nice belong to France. So the kings kind of got together and decided, all right, this is the way it's going to be. Nice will now belong to France. And uh, what happened was, is the city of Nice donated this statue that you see behind me to the to France. So now it became united with France. So there's a little bit of history about Nice. Okay, so right now we are on the promenade here, just downtown Nice. And this is literally the spot where everybody comes just to go for a nice walk, a bike ride, or a run, or a jog. Um, enjoy the beachfront, of course, and just just have a wonderful day. You can walk literally for seven kilometers. So you can go all the way from the harbor all the way to the airport. It's all walkable. And uh, they do a lot of activities here as well, like the Ironman competition or marathons, it all happens here. So definitely a place to see. And behind us, where you see that blue chair, that's kind of an iconic symbol here in Nice. It's uh, done by one of the artists. So if you're coming, definitely enjoy a promenade as the French do. public and free but uh, like any um, any other area you'll have the areas that if you want you can go pay for the chair and drinks that are in front of the restaurants and bars as you just saw behind us there so one thing you're gonna notice is that Nice looks very much like an Italian city the old town area because it was run by or was owned I guess by Italy at the time the kingdom of Italy and so you're gonna see all the buildings and the main square remind you of a typical Italian city. So this here's their opera house and it was built by the same organization as the Eiffel Tower. This is what's amazing about Europe. We're just going into this store. This is fifth generation owned, if you can imagine. Check this out. Here we're about to try something which is very special and it's candied fruit. So I'm not sure of their process of how they make it, but they have a special way of doing it. And we were able to sample some and it was absolutely delicious. Mmm, I like it. So Maison Auer has been in business, if you can imagine, since 1820, so for five generations. And they make all these really yummy delicacies like these chocolates here and chocolate covered almonds and the candied fruit that you saw earlier. And it was told, or I heard, that even the Queen of England, I'm not sure if it's the present one or the past one, came for her tea time here. It feels like it's just a piece of art from like the cabinets and everything. It's so pretty in here. goes on every single day except for Mondays. Mondays is an antique market and then um, so first you have the flowers and then you go into the vegetables and fruits. So this is the size of vegetables we're used to, but look at this one, it's just massive. Angelique, let me see what you just found. 
Strawberries. Are they good? Yeah. Mmm. find everything here so behind me they have all the mixture of teas and then you get all the spices it just like goes on and on and on it's quite big the thing they make here in nice they make chickpea pancakes and this is what it looks like behind me look at this beautiful church here this is called the church de jesus so the jesus church and it's a baroque style so let's go look inside and see what it looks like So here in the old town, you get all the different restaurants and you get the cafes and you get narrow streets and then some other larger streets and then all these little artiques and boutique places. It's just really fun. So just a short distance from the market, you can come and explore this beautiful palace that we discovered. It's a very small entrance, so you might miss it. They've now transformed it into a museum of instruments. So they have over 500 instruments on display to see. And we went through the whole palace. It was owned at one point by a family called the Vintimile La Carisse, and they owned it till, until 1802. Everything in here is original from when they used to live here and in this room they do different concerts and such. Okay, so if anyone's watching and you're a musician or a historian of music, let us know in the comments below because what we think is that maybe because the piano and the harp are complementary instruments, that maybe people playing the piano is just to demonstrate that it's the same chords, but we're not sure. So comment below what you think and let us know. Have a chapel. I know it's a really small one, but of course, why would you need a big one if it's inside of your house? It's just beautiful. Look at the ceiling. Wow. Look at this guitar. Like, look at all the art inside of it. We tried authentic French cuisine right in the heart of Nice, and we had a whole plate of the most delicious appetizers, red peppers, we had some different crushed olives, and it was just so delicious. All right, so we just had the most amazing lunch here. This is the restaurant called Lou Francalin and uh, we're super full first of all but um, what's really nice about this restaurant is it's all very authentic and uh, local cuisine so you get the real uh, experience of Nice culture and food and if you can see they have this like um, kind of I don't know if you want to call it a label but basically what that is is they have someone from the area that goes out and um, controls the restaurants and makes sure that the food is all authentic and and uh, from the area and such and so this is the experience we had today and it was delicious so right now we're in Plaza Rossetti. And this is the main downtown square here in Nice. And we're just about to go into another beautiful Baroque style cathedral. Right now we're just on a little tour and uh, if you can see behind me, see how narrow the streets are? 
This is a street full of little shops and boutiques and yeah, everything. shoes, everything you think of. It's really nice. So we're just going on a little tour and we're going to show you the next piazzo. They call them piazzo because it used to be Italy. So the squares are piazzas as well as squares, if you will. Well, it's nice since it's kind of like used to be Italy. There's tons of like purses and shoes and gelato ice cream. I think. Lots, lots of gelato ice cream here which we'll have to try some later, so. Yeah. Look at this store, this is so cool. This is all the soaps. Savon de Marseille. Chloe, what do they make at this shop? Magical wand. To make you disappear. Yeah, so they call these les baguettes magiques. And I think we should get one of these to clean our house. What do you think? Yep. One. So where we are right now, we're still like literally a block away from the water, really close to the port. And this is more of where the locals live. Um, the buildings here are like Niswa style buildings. And um, this is what it's like. So we just found a vegetarian place. It might be vegan, but it's called Bada Boom. And so we're gonna go check it out. Our so something cool they do here is they have an organization as well called Everyday Earth. So they do something called like No Suspendu. When I first read it, I thought it was like filtered coffee or something. I didn't realize what it was, but it's almost like this pay it forward system. And you can like pay for someone else's drink. And then they put down the names of the people who paid for a drink and then the person who received it. So for those that are in the community that are maybe a little less fortunate who can't pay themselves a drink, they can come in here and enjoy it. Um, from someone else who has gifted it to them. So I thought that was really nice and really cool. So this here is the Plaza Giribaldi. And what's really interesting is all these windows that you can see, it's all actually painted below the window and, and around. So it's not real, it's painted. And uh, it's just a really nice spot to come for happy hour or a drink or a pizza or, or whatever. So that man, the sculpture that you see behind us, that's Garibaldi. And uh, he's Italian actually, and he wasn't very happy that Nice became part of France. And so he's looking in the direction of Italy, and that's why his statue is faced this way. Okay, so behind me is their national feeder, and the director is Irina Brook. And she is apparently very well known. Here we go, this is it. So where we are right now is called the Parc Payom and the reason why is because the Payom is a river that goes into the Mediterranean so it's actually underneath of us right now and this park is just a really nice area for kids to come and play, families to go for a little walk and uh, there you go. So Nice has one of the largest airports here in France. It's one of the, the second largest ones. And um, of course you can arrive from here and then go right over to Monaco and Cannes and get to the whole coast from this one airport here. So this place here, this square is it's called Plaza Massena. It's quite lively and really large, as you can see. It's just beautiful. Right now, we are going to do the girls' favorite thing, and that is ice cream. So we're going to a real Italian gelateria, which they have many of here because uh, they've got a huge influence from Italy, since they're right beside Italy. So we're going to go taste them, and apparently they just are amazing. So we're looking forward to that. So this is the main shopping street and you can find any name brand here. So here is where we're going to have the real authentic Italian ice cream. It's called Cesar Milano. I'm Girls, so how is I it? I decided on raspberry. I decided on... It's called... Um, Caesar. Caesar? Caesar, yeah. And they're delicious. 
we were able to try all the different ice cream flavors, which were delicious. And what was really cool is because grass is so close, which is the perfume capital of the world, the very first ice cream flavor that they made was actually eau de rose. And so they mixed that with, I believe, honey, and we got to sample that one, which was amazing as well. So this building that you see here, all of these windows, that's actually painted on but it looks so real that it's even fooling us. It's just crazy. So oftentimes we say like, would we live in a city or would we want to move to this place or that place? And we all have agreed that Nice is a place we would actually live in because there's several reasons. One is we all speak French. It's not too big, although the population here is 350,000 people. You've got water, which is one of the criteria that we really like having water. Uh, you have access to everything. Italy's right beside you, and the architecture, guys, is so pretty. Like all the buildings. An old town. You have an old town. Um, the food, the French food, okay, is like the best in the world. So you've got everything going. So, hmm. This is one of the options. This is where we spent the night in Nice. It was called High Park by Adagio. It was so conveniently located because it was literally only about a 15 minute walk right to the beach and a couple minute, minutes to the downtown area. And uh, it had a really nice kitchen and just comfortable beds. We had two rooms which were adjacent, so it worked out really good. And they even had a pool up above which the girls were able to take advantage of. This here is the harbor area of Nice and right behind this harbor you can walk up where the rocks are and go get the most amazing view. So a couple things I want to mention to you is that you can take all the stairs to come up here or there's an elevator as well. So for those of you who don't want to take the walk, go ahead and take the elevator, which is what we did. So we've been walking, walking, walking for days now and everyone's getting a little bit tuckered out. So. Up here where we are is called Castle Hill. I just wanted to say that to you because this is where the castle um, is and uh, where they kind of had their primary home and then where you saw the museum that was also part of the, the family's other home. We took the elevator up but we're going to take the walk down and I'm not sure if I mentioned this to you but the Promenade des Anglais is the walkway all along the beachfront and they call it the Promenade des Anglais because in the past it was the English that would come on their holidays here and enjoy the walkway as we are today.